Hi there, Team Token, Sam, and all the rest of you good people out there. I hope that you're all safe and sound and that health is with you. Regarding your question on that animation on the um, kind of bolt head hole measurement tool there, um, let's see if we can clarify th some things for you there. Uh, so I got your tool here on the screen. Uh, we can see that it's uh, slightly off from uh, the uh, kind of uh, work coordinate system there. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we will we will kind of uh, fix that anyway. I would probably work with it vertically, kind of like that though. But uh, well, that's me. Don't know how this has been defined. So. Um, I thought that we would walk through the process and see uh, if we can figure some things out together here. Uh, so we got these parts here, we got the two jaws here kind of. Uh, we got the slider nut and we got a joint which everything would uh, kind of revolve around. Um, I have prepared just a slide in the animation designer, so if we could bring uh, bring the animation um, pane out here. Uh, we can see uh, that I have prepared some rigid groups here. Uh, we got the extrude, which would be uh, kind of uh, the center of rotation for everything here. Uh, we got the kind of slide and nut here, which is going to slide in a specific direction. Uh, and we got the two different jaws here, which is going to open and close depending on when I uh, kind of uh, push this uh, slider nut here towards the center. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we uh, got all these groups. We kind of need some joints here. And for that, we need the joint menu. I evoke the joint menu here, and I'm going to start by creating a fixed joint. And the fixed joint is going to be the center, which happened to be named extrude. Uh, maybe it would be better to name it something more logical, but that's what it's named right now. Uh, it's going to be a fix, so we're going to uh, accept that. And then we're going to create that slider joint there uh, for the uh slide and nut if I may refer to it as that. And 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 that is actually going to go in the direction from the center here to center down here. Uh, I have uh cheated a bit and I have created a little line there to help me with that direction. Uh obviously you can select two points that will also get you there. Uh from the center on this side to the center of this side. If it would be this side, it would be slightly offset and it would be the wrong direction. Nevertheless, uh, I created that line there to help me with the direction. And we go back to create a joint here. We're going to create that slider joint there. And uh, we're going to select that uh, kind of nut there that is going to slide up and down that line there. And it's going to go in the relations to that extrude. And here comes the uh, key, <clears throat> excuse me. We need that uh, to specify that specific vector. And I'm gonna use the, oops, I'm gonna use the uh, line there to do that. And we can see that we get the direction there. So perfect, we got the direction. Now, if we, if we want to get this thing moving, uh, we're gonna have to add some more stuff to it. And I'm gonna add a position motor here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit big there, so but uh, you you get the picture there. Uh, we need that slider joint to be driven, kind of, and uh, uh, we want to drive that. Let's say fifty millimeter, because it depends on how how big the slot is. Uh, I'm I'm going to drive it specific dimension here. You could obviously set it to to, to stop when it collides down here, etc. Uh, but this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm I'm going to be happy with fifty. Uh, so we say OK to that. And the thing here is that, well, you might want to try how it works. Uh, you could simply hit play and you will see that uh, that thing uh, moves towards the center there. I could repeat that process just to see uh, how it works. Uh, we also have the uh, timeline that we could evoke. 
and and he'll get more stuff that we can um, uh, handle, and it will be easier to to see all the events and organize them in 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 uh, the required sequence, so to say. Uh, I'm going to be happy with that right now, uh, and I'm going to continue my quest. I know that. Okay, so I've, I created my fixed joint. I created my slider joint. And I have a motor that is is uh, is helping me moving these parts. So uh, these jaws here, uh, they also needs to need to be moving. So we create another joint. Uh, let's focus on on one of them first. Uh, let's focus on this guy here. Uh, actually, I want a little bit of assistance here. Uh, this could be good. Uh, because you, you probably want to do this in the future as well. Uh, I changed the uh, reference set to entire part here, uh, because all of these parts contains uh, geometry that I can refer to in the sense of curves, etc. Uh, and that is, is, is what I will, will be using. So I will be focused on the other jaw there to start off with. And uh, we can see that the line is going to the center uh, between uh, these two jaws as well. So I will be using that same plane, which would be kind of the second plane here. That will be the center or, or the plane of my curves to control this, which is kind of essential when I will use my, my joint that will refer to curves. Okay, so we move back to our animation uh, navigator and uh, we, we will uh, start by creating that joint for that specific jaw uh, to, to uh, prevent it from uh, be freely in space so to say we will create a revolution joint there a revolute joint uh, using uh, that jaw and in relations to let's see here now it would be the extrude there right okay and I will use uh, 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 since since the uh, since since the axis. I'm assuming that it's aligning with the z-axis here. Uh, I will also set the uh, reference point there. Uh, it will have to be obviously around the same center. I'm using the coordinate point of the coordinate system there, which I'm assuming is in the center. And we say apply to that. Cool. So that means, <clears throat> excuse me. That means that I have now, uh, I have now uh, given the system the the prerequisites that um, uh, the jaw will only rotate around the kind of center piece there or the extrude. Uh, however, it will not rotate with that slider joint yet, just yet, since I have not set that requirement. So it cannot do anything but just stay where it is. Okay. So, uh, we go back to uh, creating another joint, and here's kind of the trick for you. We're going to create a curve on curve. And what object do we want to be moving? Well, I want the jaw there to be moving. And I want the curve on that jaw. And I think I have a curve. I'm selecting the single curve. You can select the whole thing around, but then you might get multiple solutions there so i'm going to stick to one um so you could you could you could see this kind of like a cam cam shaft thing uh, here as well so uh so we, we're going to select the second curve and that will be the curve you know, on the um slider uh joint there if you like and you probably don't need the zero position there uh, since we're gonna let it slip around that, we're not gonna fix it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna add the end point there. Was the idea of that line there? Perfect. Okay. And we say okay to that. And just to verify what we just did, we're gonna play the sequence here. So we play, and we can put it on repeat if we want. Uh, we play it, and we see that now it's riding on that. Uh, pin there that is sliding down. So great. Uh, only thing that re that remains is is to do the same thing on the other side as well. Then, uh, so uh, we go to the uh, assembly navigator. We highlight the uh, 
the one we have here. And we do the same thing. So we said that I needed a revolution joint, revolute joint first, not fix, revolute. Uh, this jaw needs to revolve around, uh, let's say, uh, the extrude it was. And let's say around that vector. And here comes the important thing. You need to set it to revolve around the same axis, right? Okay. So uh, there we go. Uh, nothing will happen with this. It will stay in place since it's not riding on, on that curve there. We need to fix that. Uh, so let's do that. We need another joint and we need that uh, uh, curve on curve joint and we need uh, this guy to move. We need to let that curve ride on that curve or the opposite and uh, I still want to define the zero position on that thing either. Okay. Uh, we're happy with that, and that means I should be able to go back to... Okay, let's hide that line. Uh, let's get rid of the clutter here, show everything, and we set it back to just show the solids, okay? And now we should be able to play this thing. So if I just simply play it, we can see that it works. Great. So... Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, we still might want to uh, get this uh, to move back and forth. Uh, easy task if we bring up the timeline and we just say mirror this guy. And we play it. And since we have it on repeat, it's going to play back and forth. Now, if you want to animate this in several sequences, and uh, have this moving up and down like 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 this. Well, obviously you could just uh, uh, kind of uh, do that when you have cut the movie and and, and uh, kind of uh, uh, create uh, uh, several copies of that sequence and run it. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's remove that uh, and uh, let's just do a mirror on this. We can do a mirror on that as well. And you can you can even put a mirror on all of these, I think. All of these, I thought. Mirror. And you have a multiple sequence here. So, uh, if I now play that, it will run back and forth. And you can see the sequence. You can change the sequence. You can change your timing, etc. Okay, so this was just a crash course kind of to uh, your uh, little tool there. And uh, hey, I forgot one thing. Uh, we have run this animation now. And uh, this is the AEP version, but it should be the same in yours. You need to find the Ray Trace Studio thing there. You need to evoke it and uh, it's going to start rendering. I'm going to put it on pause there because the one you want to use is save animation. This means that you will save the animation that you have created and you can see that I've also added material to, to this specific part. And uh, it will render each, let's, let's evoke that, we can see the settings uh, on the save animation. Uh, so I'm gonna run it the entire timeline, uh, photorealistic of course, and uh, 50 frames per second, uh, autocomplete, simple, uh, nothing extra here. Size is going to be, in this case, um, uh, user-defined. And uh, we're going to save it somewhere. Uh, well, we don't have to save it, really. Um, and, and, and when you hit OK, it's going to run off and it's going to create those animations or those series of images that is going to put, to get put together into one animation and you should be good to go. Now, depending on the complexity of your, excuse me, of your geometry here, it might take a, a bit of time. Also depending, of course, on, on uh, your system, uh, the quality of your graphic cards, etc., uh, which uh, drastically improves speed. Uh, 
the better graphics card you have, of course. Uh, okay, so with that, I am going to leave you, and I hope this was informative for you, and uh, it will help some of you guys out there. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm wishing you a uh, great weekend. Uh, stay safe, stay sound, and above all, stay healthy. Uh, over and off from Fred. Bye for now.